All right. Greetings and salutations. What's going on? New weeks, new energies, or fresher energies. It's your boy D Bone with uh, Living, Learning, Learning Ascension. And that's essentially going up. So, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, ran, and we're going to get this divine feminine cracking right now. So, head, that's swords. Thoughts, decisions, mentality, ideology, the direction you're going, decisions you're making, everything starts from the mind, the spade. Next, we got cups. Is there cups out here? There is not a single cup out here. Hmm. Cups, hearts. These are feelings and emotions. All feelings and emotions are just indicators in where you are going mentally. Heart and mind must be aligned with everything that you do. Who rules the heart and mind department? The divine feminine. Uh, he could be she, she could be he. You know how we rock in on the feminine and the masculine energy. Okay? You got male feminines. You got female masculines. You know what I'm saying? It ain't got nothing to do with uh, sexual orientation. It ain't got shit to do with gender. You know what I mean? It's just pure energy. All right? Man and woman. Both have the feminine and masculine energy, but one is dominant within the human, the person, you know. So uh, we got wants, needs. Those are actions and behavior. Things you're doing, things you've done. Not what you're finna do because you ain't did it yet. What you've done got karma and accountability attached to it. What you're doing got karma and accountability attached to it. What you finna do does not. Who's the king of wands? The divine masculine is. So the wands and the pinnacles is the masculine realm. Once again, the queen of wands, which is divine feminine. Realm is the mind, swords, and the heart of cups. Pinnacles, the feet. These are manifestations. Things you can taste, touch, see, feel, and hear. All pinnacles expire. All pinnacles have expiration dates. And all pinnacles are temporary. It's not just a pentacle. Something tangible. It's a pinnacle. P-I-N-N-A-C-L-E. That's a term. That's a space. So it's like your pregnancy date. You a contractor for a job. This is your term. You in a high position or a congressman or alderman or some shit. Your term. You a CEO. Your status. Um, you an employee. Your status. You know what I mean, um, just terms. Because those that's high will get low, and those that's low will get high. You know. It's a good thing pinnacles are temporary, expire, you know what I mean? Because it shake things up. Feminine, let's get with it. First cardio message, we have the king of wands, which is the divine masculine. So, <sighs> twin flame rant. In the twin flame game, you got the divine masculine, which is the king of wands, and you got the divine feminine, which is the queen of wands. He could be a she, she could be a he, you know how we rocking with the king. He could be a she, she could be a he, you know how we rocking with the queen. For example, I'm a divine feminine. So how I'm represented in the car and messages and shit like that would be the queen of wands. I have a twin sister. She just happens to have the masculine energy. My mother has happened to have the masculine energy. Two strong ass women. Very female, physical looking. But inside they just different. More different than me. I'm a guy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like physical, male, masculine exterior. Inside, feminine energy. Divines are counterparts. So every divine masculine has, not every, but because every divine doesn't have a twin flame. But in the twin flame game, you have a divine counterpart who is your opposite. You got a king and a queen. The feminine is more illuminated, more advanced, more hip to what's going on, more woke, so to speak. You know what I mean? And it's divine feminine's job to wake up the divine masculine. You know, feminine came up on a lot of things. A lot of divine feminines develop powers. Psychic abilities, healing Reiki abilities, you know, prophesizing, you know, spell casting, all kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like I say, X-Men. If I was an X-Men, I'd be more like Gambit. So nice with cars. I mean, I'm decent without cars, but with them, I'm kind of deadly. Keep that stick on me. Slick like grease. You know what I'm saying? You got night crawlers out here. You got storms out here. Okay? You got rogues out here. Jubilees and shit. Beasts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Juggernauts out this motherfucker. Like, you know, divines have powers. And it's divine feminine's job to unlock the power out of the masculine because the masculine is the initial flame. When the feminine 
was just dilly dallying in her life until she met her divine counterpart. Upon meeting her divine counterpart or his divine counterpart, immediately the divine feminine was illuminated. It ain't like the masculine know what the fuck he doing to the feminine, bringing her powers and gifts and insight and access to the infinite. You masculine, you literally change your feminine life. It's like a spark. Masculine with the feminine on fire. Poof. Turn the feminine from like Jean Grey to the fucking Phoenix. And now, as the Phoenix, feminine's finna go burn the. Like I say, your master destroyed you. <laughs> destroyed you. And you turn into a new person. Like a Phoenix. Like a caterpillar in a cocoon to turn into a butterfly and shit like that. Like, masculine is the key. Unlocking your mind, powers. I was woke before I met my divine master, but I got woke her post recognition. I, you know, I had a little bit of spiritual insight and shit, but I ain't had no motherfucking X Men powers the way I do now from being in this twin flame situation. And I'm a twins like myself. You know, we get in a situation for a reason. Might not be to live happily ever after on some Disney shit. Just maybe a Quentin Tarantino movie here. Just maybe just a Spike Lee joint we just gonna have to sit through. Okay, so fairly important. Divine feminine. When it comes to the divine masculine, know who he is. Know who she is. Through and through. Why? So when your masculine get to doing shit, the shit that they're doing won't be a surprise to you. Won't be shocking. Because you know who your divine counterpart is. And if you know who you are, you'll definitely know who your divine masculine is. If you don't know who you are, you never recognize your divine masculine. Once again, if your divine masculine knows who he is, he'll recognize you. But he'll, you know, if he don't know who he is, he ain't gonna know who you are. If he can recognize himself, then he'll see the you and him, and vice versa. The master don't love himself. He can't love you. That's why you have unconditional love. It's this twin thing brings, it brings unconditional love. To love people where they at, to love people in spite of, because of the things they do. <laughs> Feminine, you do shit too. Because you both trigger each other. Like I say, you two pull the worst out of each other. Heal each other. Like I say, y'all basically just killing each other and putting each other back together. You know, divine feminine, you're like uh, Jack Skellington's boo. You know, the chick who's like puppet. She jumped off the building and lost her limbs. Then she sat and tied herself back together. Madison taught you how to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Jack Skellington, he was the king of Halloween and shit, but, you know, fucking with this chick, this feminine. Kind of open his heart and mind up to new things. That's why he fell in love with Christmas Town. Like, what am I feeling? That's joy. That's love. That's celebration. That's family. Like that shit you ain't feeling at Halloween 24 hours a day. You know, it took her to really get him on a whole new path. To really get him on a whole new situation. Because if they, if he would have met her, Jack would have been on the same thing he does every year. And if she would have met him, she still would have been a freaking slave servant at the big brain wheelchair goblin house. You know what I'm saying? Getting back to the point. You two are made for each other. You know, whether y'all with each other romantically, whether y'all just friends. Hey, even for deep separated twins like myself, I'm deeply separated from my twin and shit. Yeah, I know, because it'd be like back and forth, we cool, then we not cool, and then we separate, and then we back, and then, you know, it ranges from six weeks to the smallest separation I had to damn near two years. The longest separation I had with my divine masculine in the 14 years that I've been playing this game. It could be 12, 13 years, 13 years, I've been in this twin flame journey, 13, 14 years, and seven years are signs of completion. You should know who your divine masculine is, divine feminine. By year seven. You'll know who your friends are in seven years. You'll know who family in seven years. But as you see, look back in your life. Every seven years, it's like a cycle. It's like a shake-up. A reset. Of everything. Protect your divine master. Guide him. Reach out even if you don't want to get reached to. Respect his boundaries. You know? I don't want to see you anymore. Stay out of my life. Okay, your wish is my command. If that helps you... Me not being around, then so be it. You know what I mean? Respect his wishes, but take initiative. This shit is chess, not checkers. Be very methodical and precognitive of how you move with your masculine. Your masculine just moves. He just does shit. And, and then reacts to what happens type shit. So, bottom line, 
We got you, Divine Feminine. You got yourself. That's the most important thing in this message is you, yourself. You have a role. You're divine. It's shit you need to be doing. What's the Divine Feminine's role? To evolve. Not only yourself, but your Divine Masculine. The little bit of family you can, the little bit of friends you can reach. And anybody in the world, the community, the state, the, the, the district, you know what I'm saying? The region who you can influence in the best possible way. It's your job. What's the Divine Masculine's job? To tool wands. What's that? Support. You evolve it. Masculine is there to support you during this evolution, during this chrysalis, during this cocoon phase, during this transfer from Jean Grey to Phoenix. It's like a coach. You're a fighter. This is your coach, your trainer, and your motherfucking corner. You know, letting you know what the fuck you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Who warned you of a lot of shit that was going to happen before this fight? The feminine is hard headed. Thus, you understand that your coach, your trainer was correct. And they wasn't just hard and coming down on you like, you know, they hating on you or got some beef with you or some shit. Like I say, when shit gets thick, that's when you really see you know, the true behavior of each other. When the lowest of lows happen, you, you know, the feminine really get this. Like, like, God, I ain't got time to keep, like, to say it all, but <clears throat> you have a very important role. In your life, your masculine's life, family, friends, like I said, the little ones you can reach, that's woke. And the people around you. How does a queen move in a chess game? All over the place. Very, very deadly piece on a, on a checkboard. It's, 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 you know, as enemies fucking with a queen, we got to get her out of here. Got to get her ass off the board. Because, you know what I'm saying, she deadly. The most deadly person on the board is the queen, right? Because how does she move? I bet. How does the king move in a chess game? They only move just to survive, to a wands. Besides supporting the Divine Feminine, the Divine Maxine's job is just to stay alive long enough to see the greatness that the Feminine being can, like, the greatness that the Feminine does. And he gets help from it. He can, when the Feminine does something so good that the Divine Maxine can be good, too. You know what I mean? It's like that. Maxine just needs to be alive you know, to be in the game. Because it's a game, and you play to win. You ain't playing to look cute. You ain't playing to look like you can play. Who don't want to be a champion? Who ain't trying to be top tier? It ain't about who's the inflamed situation that's better than the next. It's the quality. It's the quality. That's why I'm glad I'm on a play situation. Like, like some. It's not sexual, not romantic. I told you, me and my divine masculine. Me? And my divine masculine has, like I say, a Padawan Jedi dynamic, uh, father son dynamic, master apprentice, master apprentice dynamic. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's different. So I can get everything from my twin flame situation. Because I ain't too mostly involved in, like, the sex and the romance and getting let down and expectations. And there were two fucking guys, too. So, like I say, it's still hell. I still go through. Same feelings and emotions y'all go through with y'all twins, same shit I go through with mine. It's just different. <coughs> you like this, son. Like, we tight as fuck, but it's like we get our put and pull too. I mean, like I say, we just friends, but like, the <laughs> white master has to separate himself from me. I could be too much. Just him being around me. He gives me life when that nigga's around. Sometimes I can, like I say, like a fire, destroy him, burn him. Tear down all his beliefs of what life is. Like I say, that's what you do. When masculine meets you, feminine, their whole thought process on life has changed. Everything they was taught, everything their parents told them, everything their fucking church told them, their Boy Scouts told them, Girl Scouts told them, fucking schools, everything that influenced them. You know what I'm saying? You are the anomaly, the complete opposite of what the fuck they knew. They thought they knew what love was till they came up on an unconditional loving creature like yourself. They thought they knew what special was until they came up on the old special ass. They just think of one in a million. You are one in six trillion, seven trillion. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you a different level of emotions, feminine, a different level of expression, a different level of spirituality, of thinking, of feeling. The masculine loves that, which they could adopt your shit from the gate. But the whole fight is just, like I say, 
accepting the situation, the twin flame thing, the feminine, this the demo, you know, is accepting it. Masses too deep rooted in their ideology and their ideology switching is just it takes long. It takes a while, it takes a lot. Feminine, you can see the light and recognize it and move more habitably. Masculine's fighting the light, fighting, fighting the system, like trying to really not conform. And another thing with this divine masculine, you know, like I said, they just feel that God tested them bringing you in their life. Once again, they're religious, but the spiritual shit, feminine on, like this is it's unknown, it's unheard. They don't know if it's right or not. They don't know if you bring him down to damnation or try to get him to switch his religion or some shit to give it, you know what I'm saying? Like it's deep, very deep, but it's mainly the ideology that was put into your masculine that you have been chosen feminine to disintegrate and destroy and build a new the way your masculine did subconsciously, unconsciously. Feminine, you move conscious in this twin flame situation. Masculine moves subconsciously, doesn't know the good shit that he does for you, the bad shit that he does to you, the ugly shit that happens. Different. You tell your twin flame story, how y'all met, all that shit. It's gonna be different from when the masculine tells it. When you fell in love with your masculine and shit, it's going to be different from the time when your masculine fell in love with you. That's why I say know who your masculine is. Know his story. Know what they want. Know them. So, like I say, when they do shit, it ain't too shocking. That's why you can pull a move or do some shit and masculine. Don't be too shocked or tweaking off the shit you do because, you know, they do know you. Moving on. Go make this brisk. You got the Ten of Wands coming to the situation. It's your meat and potatoes. You had this last message, I think. And I've been pulling this out with a lot of clients. This is just Ten of Wands. This is a temporary ending. Taking a break. This is you directly feminine. You're going to have to take a break from something. You have to call time out on something. You need to figure some shit out. It's just, you know, leaving leave shit alone. You know, placing holes on shit. To get something else together. It's just the equivalent of like I say, you playing basketball, it's a championship game. Y'all was down by three, you hit a field goal, boom, y'all down by one. You steal the ball with four seconds left. You grab the ball and call the timeout. Okay, they want you to take the game winning shot. Inbound, you get the ball. You call another timeout. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Hey, it's four seconds in the game. Let me get a, let me get a breather. Let me think. I don't want to. You know I mean, I'm gonna get one shot at this coach. Coach, alone. <laughs> you get your shit right, and then boom, you dominate. Hold on one second. Yeah, I'm on my way. Just just give me a few real quick. Uh, just on uh, tighten up some business. Okay, yeah, I'll be right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Ugh. Work. All right. So you call timeout. You get your shit right. You get in the game. You win the game. You know, in spite of. You ain't do it your way. You just did what was best. Something that the masculine does frequently. What you don't see with that is the progress is going to come from this timeout, from this break, from this whole up wait energy here. Like I said, it's just time for you to chill out. Pump the brakes on something you're passionate about. Either you ain't got the time to, to work that right now, you got other things on your plate right now before you handle that, or like I say, you just can't. This is temporary, so you're going to have to pick whatever this is back up. You're going to have to continue whatever this was, but like I say, just take a temporary break as far as you directly. Consciously directly, you got the Nine of Swords feminine, which is um, stress. What's stress? That's losing sleep, losing teeth, losing hair, losing weight the wrong way from worrying, from stressing, which is mental stress. It's in the mind, something you register. Stress is like putting cheese on your cheeseburger, putting ketchup on your fries, putting salt on your steak. You can eat the steak without the sauce. You can eat the taco without the cheese, burger without the cheese. You don't have to put sauce or toppings on anything. More healthier if you did, but you have a choice for free will. To, to, to do what you please. You know what I'm saying? Stress is something you put on yourself. 
mentally. It's a mental thing. You choose the stress. You choose the care. And what's the next step after the nine of swords? The ten of swords. What's the ten of swords? Death. I told you we are walking, talking power plants for human beings. It takes a lot to kill us. Literally. You poison us. Our food for years. You poison our water for, for decades. I'm saying we're still going to be alive and kicking with no horns, no tails, no extra teeth. Like I said, diseases down. You can fucking shoot us, stab us, blow us up, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Drop us off high places. We still can survive. You understand what I'm saying? We're human beings. We're powerful like that. But what's going to kill us is our mentality on cancer, on the viruses that we are fighting and eradicating out of our bodies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you your own worst enemy. It's your mind. It ain't the wound that's going to kill you. It's your thought on the wound. Think it's gonna kill you with will. You think you fucked up, you are. It's all mental. So something that's stressing you. And you need to just remember you're too blessed to be stressed. Everything happens for a reason. God don't make no mistakes. And he's absolute. He could be a she, she could be a he, you know, I'll be rocking with God. But don't stress. Since just sense the stress. You know what I'm saying? And eradicate it and move on advocately because what you don't see is God. Once again, there's no need to stress. God got you. God been has you what he ain't got you now. Whatever you're going through and stressing over feminine, I'm sure you've been through this shit many times before. Probably worse for situations, but you stressing over this one. It's mental. Our feminists are just too in their mind about their situation or shit they dealing with, forgetting that you've been here before and that you know, this too shall pass. So, moving on to the masculine role. And I'm going to keep this very quick. You directly in regards to the masculine energy, this could deal with your divine masculine. This could deal with a masculine. Many of your life, son, uncles, what to be. You got fear. Like I said, everything happens for a reason. Whether you're with your masculine, whether you're separated from your masculine, whether you are in your high space right now or at your lowest of lows, like everything, you, you, you were meant to be here. This was meant to happen. You were meant to be separated. Like, you know what I mean? It's all part of the divine plan. If you're waiting for love, then that means you got to have patience. But imagine waiting for divine love. What is divine patience? I'm saying like it's deep. This shit is deeper than what you think. It's more detailed than what you can even imagine. You just have to, like I say, roll with the punches, let time, which really, really don't have out here, move forward. And it needs to move. Because I'm telling you, what you don't see, and this has been popping out a lot with the feminines, is a, is a, is a king of pentacles. This is a karmic masculine, a good karmic masculine, or a bad one. Aside from a person, okay, this is the CEO. What's the CEO? It's the person who has all the accountability. You can hire a boss, have your boss run your situation, but if your boss fuck up, it falls on you. This is an alchemist. This is a magician, a master manifester. This king of pinnacles energy is. It's a person that can manifest whatever the fuck they want. Feminists, your biggest fears with your masculines is that they're not who they say they are, or they not who you think they are, or they're going to turn from Dr. Jackal to Mr. Hyde, or like I said, you made the wrong decision. Like, you know what I'm saying? Time, time does have to tell for you to answer those questions that you're pondering, right? All right. <laughs> and the more you think about the negative or think about how ugly it could be, it could be just like that. You are the thinker who thinks the thoughts that makes the things. You are the thinker who makes the thoughts that makes the things. Because thoughts become things. So be careful what you think. Be careful how you move in, in the situation. It might not even be nothing going on. Like I said, it's like you're accusing a person of cheating on you. They're probably not cheating on you. But since you're assuming that, you know, they're cheating, they're assuming you're cheating. Or that's probably what you want to do. And they weren't even thinking about it until it came in their mind. Now they're trying to do it just like, hey, I'm getting treated as if I'm doing it. I'm going to just do it anyway. Fuck. You know what I mean? 
It ain't your fault. It ain't really his fault. It's just the direction y'all are going with each other. Future final role wrapping this up. Going to the future. Feminine, you got the truth. This is truth. Seven of Swords. Once again, sword is something you register. This is illumination. Darkness coming to the light. Something you didn't know, you know now. This is you keeping the honor with yourself. This is you keeping the honor with somebody else or somebody keeping the honor with you. This is a cat coming out the bag. A monkey wrench. You know? Truth. Truth is something you register. You've been wondering if something's happening. Boom, you got the results. Whether you inquire by a psychic reading or a paternity test. You have the facts. It's like, hey, black and white. You know what I mean, now how you deal with it, the direction you're going to go, your mentality towards whatever this is, is on you. But at least with the truth, we ain't got to play no more. At least with the facts, we ain't got to guess no more. We can literally move on advocately to the next level, next step, next phase, next person, next demo. Final card in this message, which is progression from the Seven of Swords to the Eight of Swords. Subconsciously, things you ain't going to see coming to the future is a self-imposed prison. Eight of Swords, that's the mental prison, an invisible prison. It's a false sense of security. You need to secure something for you to secure something. We make something under nothing every day. We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't need things to, to get things. We possess things or have things already that can manifest things that we need or at least put us in a direction to get what we want or you know what i mean to make a broad decision to get what we need by any means necessary so like i say you don't need shit for shit that's just an insecurity a mental prison you're gonna put yourself in waiting on whatever that thing you think you need is or whatever position or status or pinnacle you think you need to be on to be on something else like eight of swords is also a false sense of entitlement my personal opinion, entitlement is the seed of sin. Sin is a made man word, too. Well, it's a lot of man made words that we've taken and made divine type shit when it really ain't even built like that. But, you know, entitlement, the seed of sin. Person takes from you, does you wrong, fucks you over, pushes you under a train, sacrifice your ass, like, really do you greasy, do you dirty, lying to you, conniving, not being who they say they are. Having intentions and their motives and going in a sword direction that way. And you don't even know it until Seven of Swords. It reveals itself and it will. They felt entitled to do that shit. That shit was mental. They stole from you. My bad. I ain't even. Yeah, they knew. Even if they did it subconsciously, their mind was focused on your money. So your head, like, you just, your money just happened to fall on my, my money just happened to fall in your pocket. Is what you telling me. Man, it was, man, it was an accident. Woo, woo, dude. So you didn't mean to really set me up at work and get me fired or really throw me on the bus when you're accountable for this situation. Oh, man, you know, like I say, whether it was conscious or subconscious, that's in their conscious mind, it's in their head. A lot of people don't know they're fucking you over. A lot of people don't know the magnitude of what the fuck they did to you. And then how they did it and shit. Nine times out of ten, you know, niggas want to get all spiritual post fuck over. They all spiritual, forgiving themselves, hoping you forgive them, and really don't even know what the fuck they did to you, or it was so been so long ago, you know, or they erased out their mind and stored it in a fucking compartment to where, you know, all these feelings and shit that you holding for the situation that fucked you up. You can't even get no certification or verification on it. Like, you know what I mean? It's almost like I've been holding this shit for no reason type shit. Like, like I say, it's all mental. It's chess, not checkers. And everybody playing chess. Everybody trying to make the next move their best move. Everybody trying to win. This game called life. Last effect with the Eight of Swords is the boogeyman effect. A kid believing it's a monster under his motherfucking bed. No, it's not. If it was, the parents got good guns. They waiting to shoot. They, 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 they fingers is itching to bust some caps. You know what I'm saying? It'd be a lot of dead monsters under beds. It'd be a lot of dead monsters in closets if them bitches really exist. But also, it'd be a lot of dead kids if monsters were under beds and in closets and shit. It'd be a bloody mess every night. And God, that's not the case. When you believe in this shit that ain't even there scared of shit that ain't even present 
you know, going in the direction with someone, something, or someplace, you know what I mean, with the ill intentions of what that shit really is, you put yourself in a self-imposed prison. It's a lot of invisible prisons you're being swayed to walk into. Tread lightly, tread carefully so you don't fall in one of these. It's like me and my boo. We walk down the street, she gets swallowed in a motherfucking invisible prison. She's like a mine. I can't touch her. It's definitely an invisible prison. She's stuck in. We don't know where the door at. We don't know where the window's at. We don't know where the doorknob is. Like, you know, but she got in. You got in a situation, you can definitely get yourself out. But it's an invisible prison. So you're gonna have to do everything in your power. Feel around, jump around, sing, see if your voice can break it. Like, really get creative here when it comes to getting yourself out of situations. And that's the message that I've got. Holla y'all in a minute. One.